Hi, welcome to Rock and Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, I'm doing a tribute to Jack Ponty. Now, Jack Ponty is a well-known songwriter, producer, manager, and A&R guy who is probably most well-known for the songwriting he did in the mid-80s, early 90s. Uh, a big part of the hair metal uh, scene and the, and the time period of hair metal. So he did lots of songwriting for lots of bands uh, during that time. Uh, and then moved into production and, you know, managing and A&R type work. Um, so he sadly uh, passed away um, quite recently. And I'd like to thank uh, Dave Brown, 8252. Uh, he sent me a message to let me know because I didn't know about this. Um, so I thought, well, you know, and I've done tributes to, well, done tributes, but also um, I've also profiled um, songwriters on my channel before. And I haven't done Jack Pondy, but I had talked about Jack. Uh, quite a bit on my channel because quite often I'll be talking about a band or or an album and there'll be a songwriting credit, uh, at, at least one for Jack Ponty on the album. So I'll be usually uh, will mention that because he has, um, you know, he definitely has a, a, a style of songwriting and he often will have the, the song that he has co-written or written is quite often used as the single for the album. So, yeah, very successful. And, um, yeah, like I said, uh, I, I was uh, I was actually planning on doing a profile of him anyway, so it's going to be more of a tribute, though, uh, today. So um, I guess the first thing I'll start off with is, uh, you know, his early days and just talking about that because that's also one thing he's quite well known for, and that is that he was in a band with John Bon Jovi before the Bon Jovi band really started up and got going. So like, I think, John Bon Jovi, he grew up in the New Jersey area, and they formed a band called The Rest. I think they, they started up around about 1979. I don't know exactly how long they lasted for. I think by the early 80s, they'd, they'd sort of um, gone their separate ways. But, um, you know, uh, obviously interesting that he was working with someone like John Bon Jovi, who also goes off and has you know a lot of success, of course, in the mid mid eighties. So um, John was the vocalist in the rest, and uh, Jack Ponty was on guitar. But when they do separate, he eventually um, starts up his own band, and uh, this is the band Surgeon. So um, this came out on Music for Nations, really good album. When Mid Midnight Comes is the name of the album. Uh, Russ Akara is the vocalist. I think that might be him there. Uh, he actually goes on to um, be the vocalist in the band Prophet. But, uh, yeah, so Jack Ponty Day doing lots of the songwriting and, of course, the guitar playing on this album. I think, pretty sure that that is Jack Ponty there. Yeah. Um, and what's also interesting about this album, there's a song on here called Shot Through the Heart is the second song on the album, which, of course, you may know if you are familiar with the debut Bon Jovi album. This is the debut Bon Jovi album from 1984, and on it, it has a song called Shot Through the Heart, um, which is the same song, and the co-write uh, is with, of course, Jack Ponty. So there we go. Um, so... You know, Bon Jovi, of course, on that album, don't um, become super famous yet. Uh, that's, a, you know, that's gonna, obviously going to happen with Slippery When Wet. But um, Jack Ponty and John Bon Jovi, you know, don't really work together again after that. But I, he, John Bon Jovi did uh, mention uh, Jack Ponty in the, uh, in his, when he was talking in the, uh, when he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He actually sort of talked about Jack Ponty as, even though they worked together and were both quite young, as you know, Jack was obviously maybe the more senior, more experienced, as being a little bit of a mentor to him. Um, and I know also Jack Pondy has talked about John Bon Jovi's drive and determination that he was really, you could tell, he felt like he could tell that uh, John Bon Jovi was really going to make it and was really going to be successful because he was really determined. Anyway, so, you know, um, Surgeon doesn't really take off. Well, the interesting thing about Surgeon is that... Um, 
they must have released or recorded quite a bit of material because uh, in the early 2000s, they released two albums um, on CD, early 2000s. So there's two more albums by Surgeon, but they're just, I think, demos or unreleased songs uh, that didn't make the first album. Uh, but actually, interesting enough, a couple some of those songs do feature on some of the bands uh, that uh, Jack Ponty then works with. And so what I'm going to do now is I'll just show some of the records and CDs I've got in my collection that have credits for Jack Ponty. Now, I don't have everything he did, but this is what I do have. And it's a fair amount. So um, and it's, I'm trying to do it roughly in order, but, you know, obviously not an exact thing. Um, so after Surgeon, uh, he, very close to that time, or maybe a couple of years, actually, a couple of years after Surgeon, uh, he works with Keel. And uh, he's got two songwriting credits on this album. So the first single, Somebody's Waiting, which inter interestingly enough is a uh, co-write with uh, Russ Akara, who was the vocalist for Surgeon. So maybe, again, that was one of those songs that they had demoed for a potential uh, Surgeon album that ends up going to kill, and they do a music video. It's a good song, really good song, actually. And also the song Don't Say You Love Me. So that's also credited to Jack Ponte. And that, that song, Don't Say You Love Me, also appears on the you know, uh, Surgeon album that is released in the early 2000s. Uh, then he works with Bonfire. So he has a songwriting credit on this uh, for Sweet Obsession, which is from the Fireworks album. Great album, great song. Interestingly, too, the song Sweet Obsession is uh, co-written with uh, Joe Lynn Turner. So, um, and, of course, the, the guys from Bonfire. But, uh, yeah, so he, he works on that song. And also there's a song on... Fireworks has the album, great album. Uh, there's a song here called Sleeping All Alone. Probably not one of my favorite songs on the album, but he does have a co-writing uh, credit on that. And that song, Sleeping All Alone, does also end up on one of the Surgeon albums that's released in the 2000s. So it was basically demoed for a, a Surgeon album, or I don't know, he was demoing uh, songs that he might then use as a songwriter. Um, next up, so he works with Bonfire again. Uh, he works with them. Just for the one song, interestingly, and, uh, interestingly enough. So, but it is again, it's one of the singles. It's the first single, I think, Hard on Me. So he has his song really credit for that one. Not for, I don't find um, Point Blank, that, bon that Bonfire album, quite as good as the previous one. Now, um, this is interesting that's even in my collection. And the reason that's in my collection is solely because of uh, Jack Ponty. So Jack Ponty does a song on here called. Uh, and the artist is uh, Tone, I think it's how you say it, Tone Norum, who is John Norum from Europe's sister. Uh, so I guess there's that connection as well. But the main reason I got it is because of, because it's really more pop rock. It's just, uh, not really hard rock or even AOR particularly. But um, there's a song on here called If You Ever Fall, which is uh, written by Jack Ponty, and it's a really good song. So, uh, yeah, I picked this up fairly cheap, so I thought, oh, I'll grab it. So uh, I do have that one. That's the Jack Ponty. Uh, credit for that one just the one song on that and just the one song on this one this is Shark Island because uh, Richard Black is the vocalist and uh, the song that he does is Shape For Me just the one song I think on that album Shape, Shark Island and the song Shape For Me now the next band um, yeah I've had a couple bands he has a bit more of a relationship with them. in other words it's not just one song and he's also sometimes producing them as well so he's not producer on this one this is Babylon AD but he does do songwriting on a number of the songs um and it's a really good album for me I think this is uh this is the best album they just put out, out another album this year so they're still kind of going um obviously they've had some breaks in between but uh but yeah so Jack Ponty uh has lots of songwriting credits for this one this is a good one and I think the next album which is released a couple of years later he just has the one songwriting credit on it. But, um, yeah, here we go. That's Babylon AD, their debut album. And this band even more uh, has more involvement because he's also the producer. So this is Baton Rouge and Shake Your Soul. This is their debut album. And, yeah, he's songwriting, I think, is credit, credited on everything, I'm pretty sure. Um, my understanding is when he talks about Baton Rouge, he basically talks about it being almost – Almost like it's his band, him and Kelly Keeling. Almost like it's a band, really. Um, so lots of involvement there. And, uh, yeah, this came out in 1990 on Atlantic. And, um, yeah, so works with them. 
and also produces it too. So he's, it's, I think, might be one of his first production his albums he's also a producer on. He works on their second album as well, which came out in 91. So not that long after the first one, but interestingly enough, this one has never been released on vinyl, which is quite frustrating. Lights Out on the Playground, very similar album. I think it's really good. Lots of good songs on here. Um, again, yeah, lots of songwriting by Jack Ponte, um, produced again by Jack Ponte. They also do a third album, which doesn't come out until about 1997, um, which again, it's, and again, it's pretty much like he's talked about. It's Kelly Keeling, the vocalist, and Jack Ponte really doing most of the, the playing and the songwriting. Man, that's a good album too. But um, yeah, so that's their second one. But it's a CD because it's not on vinyl. I'll show us, man, another CD as well. Now, this one came out in 92, but this is Lance Keltner. He's also producing this. And only the one songwriting credit. I'm not a big fan of this album, to be honest with you, but I'm Dangerous is the song he does a songwriting. Uh, he has a songwriting credit for. It's not bad. Um, so, And he's also a producer. So he's produced the album, but only actually one songwriting credit. Um, so it's that one. Um, some more vinyl now. Now, this is an interesting one because this must have been quite a big, um, great career move, I would think, for him, or he would be really feeling positive about this because he was given the opportunity to write on the Alice Cooper album, Hey, stupid. Now, and you know, Alice is, you know, coming off the massive success of Trash. It was really successful. This one didn't do quite so good. And I thought it was interesting that Alice went from working with Desmond Child, who's, you know, very similar to Jack Ponty and, and certainly known as, you know, this, a songwriter, does a little bit of production, probably a bigger name than Jack Ponty and Desmond Child, but still quite a big name, you know, a big Jack Ponty's still quite a big name, of course. Uh, with all the work and you know success that he has had. Um, but this was a big break for him. I thought it was interesting, though, that Alice decided, after the success with Desmond Child, to go and work with Jack Ponte. But, um, yeah, I mean, who knows if it would have made any difference uh, because this is, you know, 1991. Um, I don't know. Um, it wasn't a complete flop, I don't know, but I suppose. But, you know, hey, stupid, did it right, but not uh, as successful as... The previous album, but he, yeah, he has uh, songwriting credits on some of the songs on here. He's not a producer, it was produced by Peter Collins, but um, yeah, so working with Alice uh, on that album. Uh, also, another Alice Cooper connection, he works with uh, Kane Roberts on the Saints and Sinners album. He has a songwriting credit for Dance Little Sister, so just the one song, but also, but what's interesting too is uh, that song was co written with. Desmond Childs, I think that might be one of the only times, or one of the few times that I know of anyway, where it's uh, a song written with Desmond Child, because those two are kind of quite closely linked as sort of, you know, well-known songwriters from the, you know, hair metal years. But uh, yeah, so Desmond Child and Jack Ponty writing on that one. And of course, you know, Kane Roberts was in the Alice Cooper band. Great album, Saints and Sinners, awesome album. Um, so he actually also, too, um, I talked about him working with Tone Norum, but he does actually work with quite a few female-fronted bands, especially from now, so, uh, and you know, in, into the 2000s even. So he worked with Erica. Um, I showed this album quite recently on my female-fronted episode. This is the album In the Arms of a Stranger. He has a songwriting credit for Wake Me Up When the House is on Fire and also Danger in Disguise. Um, I think Wake Me Up When the House is on Fire, you can also find on a soundtrack somewhere, but I've seen it in a movie, I think, as well. But, uh, yeah, giving it to Erica, and there's a music video for that song as well. Uh, Erica was, uh, at one time, uh, probably when this came out around about this time, uh, was married to Ingve Malmsteen. But, um, yeah, there we go. So a um, couple of songwriting credits there. More female fronted. This is Duro, of course, from Warlock. Now, he has a big part to play on this album. He does songwriting. He's a producer. And, of course, this is 1993. So, interesting. He's, you know, still doing similar type of work, but maybe having to, you know, sort of go outside of America or work with maybe some other artists that he hasn't worked with before. Um, so, Duro, um, Duro, Angels Never Die. So, and also, I think he works with her on Machines to Machines album as well as a songwriter, producer, uh, that album's a little bit more industrial. But um, so there we go. It's that one. And that's pretty much the vinyl. A couple of CDs I wanted to show, though. So 
This is a great band called Sunstorm. This is Joe Linturner on vocals for this one. So uh, Joe Linturner connection again. Um, and the song Heat Tonight, really good song. Here's a songwriting credit for that. And um, finally, this is an interesting one. So this is Jack Ponty Presents. What's interesting about this is that um, it features, you know, uh, Sebastian Bach, uh, the guys from Nelson, Baton Rouge, Kelly Keeling, which is pretty much Baton Rouge, Stan Bush, Glenn Burtnick, Fiona. He's got these people to uh, sing some songs that he has written. And uh, I guess that uh, they, he writes about it inside the CD. There's some line, some notes about it, and he talks about how the fact that you know, basically he's getting pe he's getting people into sing on these songs, and it, that might then be used either by them or by their band or other bands as you know as, as a potential song for their album. So it's kind of maybe trying to sell the song for getting it recorded. And supposedly, uh, Jack Pondy has a lot of these type of songs uh, in the vault that just haven't seen the light of day. And I'm sure they'd be great. So. I mean, I don't know if that's ever going to happen now, but um, that's what I've heard. That he does have a lot of songs um, that just, yeah, just haven't been used. And I guess that's what happens when you're a songwriter. Um, yeah, so there we go. So uh, there are other ones as well that I could uh, talk about. So he worked with, um, it's quite well known also for working on the second Every, Every Mother's Nightmare album. I think that probably though came out around 93. I uh, did one song for Trickster. Uh, it's got a credit for one of the Dangerous uh, Toys songs from their, from their second album. Uh, it's worked with Stan Bush, who's also <clears throat> you know, he's a songwriter, but also a solo artist. Um, they've done quite a lot of songs with the Nelson Brothers. Um, Mystic Healer, which was a band um, that featured Mark Mangold from Touch and uh, Drive She Said. And even in the 2000s, you know, with the more sort of new metal uh, or newer uh, acts like uh, Otep, uh, he worked with them, and also Canadian new metal band Pity, he worked with them uh, as well on one album. And I, I saw an interview with Kitty where they weren't necessarily that positive about that experience. I and you know I've I've heard other things as well that you know Jack could be a little grumpy from time to time. So, um, but you know there's uh, I, you know I, that's just some things that I've heard. Uh, but also you know maybe he just has really high expectations, but. Uh, Anyway, um, that uh, that's pretty much it as far as you know things I know about Jack and the artists that he's worked with. But if you look on his disc discogs, you know you can see there's a very uh, it's a very large uh, list of different artists and even genres. You know, so from the 2000s, though, I talked about you know working with some uh, metal acts. He's also been started to get into some other genre, working with other artists from other uh, genres. Like he worked with um, India Aria. Uh, as her manager, and um, she, on her 2001 debut album, was working with her then, and she was nominated for seven Grammy Awards, so he was having a bit of success there. He did a and for Sebastian Bach on his um, Angels Down album, and also he's credited on Tom uh, Kiefer from Cinderella on the his debut solo album as, as being his manager, So um, and that was around 2013, so yeah, so a bit of a variety of different things, different roles as either A and R or manager, uh, or yeah, songwriting as well. So um, yeah, and I think that's pretty much it. So um, there we go. Yeah, very sad news. Um, seem to be doing this from time to time now, which is a bit of a shame. But I guess none of us are getting younger, and um, you know, this is probably what's going to happen from time to time. These people we grew up with, uh, you know, getting older. But um, anyway, um, I hope you found it interesting. Um, yeah, let me know about some uh, maybe bands that you've got in your collection that uh, have a Jack Ponty credit on it and what you think of them, uh, what you think of him and his abilities as a songwriter. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and that's it for today. I'll catch you later. All right, see ya.